everyone, this is Tamara from ShelfAddiction.com and welcome to episode 150. Tonight on Book Chat, I have something a little different for you. It's not an author interview, it's not a book discussion roundtable, it's a gift guide. It's definitely something you need right now. This is the perfect time of year for a gift guide. We're heading into Thanksgiving, which is actually tomorrow. So if you're listening to this on Wednesday, the date it goes live, happy Thanksgiving to you. And if you're listening to it after, we are heading into the Christmas season, and this is the perfect time to shop, especially if you are catching this before or on Black Friday or Cyber Monday. I know you will absolutely be able to use these recommendations. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like and share it. Show your support by rating the podcast and leaving a positive five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your podcast listening app of choice. The podcast can also be found on the Spreaker app, the only place where you can be notified of live special episodes. If you'd like to comment on something you hear during today's episode, you can find me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. If you'd like to email in feedback or questions, feel free to reach out to me at info at shelfaddiction.com or call in and leave an internet voice message via SpeakPipe. The link is below in the show notes. Alrighty, everyone, let's jump right on in. I have eight holiday gift ideas for the book nerd. I think that all, if not most of these suggestions are gender neutral. So regardless, if you have an adult or even a teenager, um, male or female book nerds, any of the gifts on this list would be great options. You just have to modify based on who you're giving to, modify based on what type of books they read, modify based on, you know, what kind of things they like. And by the way, this is in no particular order. They're all awesome awesome gifts and I like them all equally. So number one on the list is a book t-shirt. Over the last two years, I cannot tell you how many of these I have accumulated on my own through, you know, buying them on Etsy or Amazon or book subscription boxes. All, I mean, they come from everywhere. I think I have enough to probably wear I don't know, one a day for three months. I mean, that's a lot of t-shirts, but it won't stop me from buying more. So definitely check out book t-shirts. You you can get a quote, you know, from a favorite book or a famous person, uh, up to an image from a, you know, a favorite book of theirs. There's a lot of variation. You just have to look. So do check out Etsy. That's where there's a lot of handmade things and printed things that are like small batch and you could probably special order. And if you want something a little more generic, you can check out Amazon or eBay. Those are all great sources. I found a few that are kind of cool and I've linked those in the show notes. So definitely give those a look. But again, you want to find something that really ties into the books that they like. You can even tie it into, you know, other things that they like. For example, one of the ones on the list is about books and wine. So, you know, I'm in a book and wine club, so it's awesome. So if you know someone that likes wine and books, go for that, you know? So just open your mind a little and think about what they like overall and just start Googling, you know, use Etsy and Amazon and eBay and type in what, you know, you think they like. Use those keywords and you'll find some really cool stuff. So number two on my list is a game. Okay, so I... I do like to play a good game once in a while. And, you know, I mentioned on one of the pop culture episodes that I did that I do like to play Cards Against Humanity at Christmas time. And it's super fun. And I know I would love to play a bookish game. So I came across this one. It looks very interesting. I think I'll be buying it. I have not played it myself, but the reviews are awesome and it looks really fun. The game is punder dome so essentially it is all about puns <laughs> a card game about puns so it's cards against humanity style but it's about puns instead of you know rude things <laughs> so definitely give that a go and it looks like it's safe for all right so you don't have to censor who plays so that's always fun number three on my list is a reading journal You cannot lose with a reading journal. And there are lots of options out there. I've included links for um, several of the ones I found on Amazon. I mean, they have really colorful and hardback ones 
to, you know, more basic in black and white with fancy paper and, you know, paperback, different sizes, eight by 10, five by seven. They have so many options available and they are not expensive. They range from, I want to say I saw one at $5.99 and I think I saw one that was like $20.99 or something. So it's a huge range. It just depends on what type of journal you're looking for. But for readers, this will really help them keep track of what they've read and listened to because they can rate it and they can, you know, fill in all the different things that are included in these journals about the book. So it really will help them I guess, consolidate what they've read in the past year or in the upcoming year, as well as like have a memory keeper of sorts, you know, for the books they've read. So that's definitely a winning choice. All right. So number four on my list is actually a pen. And that goes great with a journal. Actually, you can buy these um on your own, you know, separately or with the journal as, you know, a, a, a combined gift but I love a fancy pen I love a pretty pen most people that are book nerds are like stationary nerds too don't ask me why those two seem to go hand in hand but they do I've never met a book nerd that didn't want a cute pen or like a cute pen I just haven't you know take it from me so pair it with the journal or buy a couple on their own and they will love it I mean The pens nowadays are so cute and they're not that expensive. You can find a crystal filled ballpoint pen. It has Swarovski crystal elements in it. Or you can find rose gold pens with like a crystal on top or a, you know, pearl on top. Or you can even buy affordable fountain pens. Now I love fountain pens as well. And you can get them in marble and different, you know, textures on the barrel. They're made out of different materials you know, from all over the world. And again, the price ranges range from, I don't know, $10 up to, of course, hundreds of dollars if you get a really expensive fountain pen. But definitely check it out. And it depends on what you're looking to spend. But you can find a very gorgeous pen for a man or a woman. Just check out Amazon um, or eBay or, you know, Etsy as well. Those are great sources. So number five is perfect for anyone that has a desk. Whether you have an office desk or a work desk at home, a homework desk, whatever. If you have a desk, you know, where you work on your laptop or, you know, write or draw or whatnot, get them a desk calendar. They have lots of desk calendars out there, but they have a really cute book lovers page a day calendar that is just perfect for the reader, the book nerd. Um, If you did some searching, I bet you could find other types of book related calendars as well. But this one was super cute and super affordable. So I have the link for that in the show notes if you'd like to check it out. That's definitely a great gift for like a coworker that likes to read or, you know, a small gift exchange that you're going to. That's a gift that's really thoughtful and useful. So definitely don't sleep on a calendar. Number six, a mug. Oh, there are so many bookish mugs out there. You come across them in the store while you're shopping. I've seen them on Amazon, eBay, um, Etsy, all those places. I've gotten them in subscription boxes. They're awesome. Like with really cute sayings, all book related things. And it's marvelous. You know, you can DIY this gift, buy the mug, grab some coffee beans, some creamer and things like that, make a little basket. Or if they don't like coffee, you can do it with tea bags, you know, loose tea. Just grab a couple things, you know, like honey sticks, you know, some tea, a couple different tea variations. I don't know, like the little clippy thing where you strain your tea. Uh, There's so many options you can do with an adorable mug. So again, this goes both ways. It's unisex. You can find a masculine bookish mug out there. And I know men drink coffee and tea, you know, just like everyone else. Or even if they don't like tea or coffee, throw hot chocolate fixings in the bag, right? You can even throw some um, inexpensive bookmarks. You can even DIY a bookmark and put it in there. There's so many things you can do starting with a mug. So really sky's the limit and it's as creative as you want to get with it. But definitely the mug is an awesome starting point because you can just tuck these little things in the mug, wrap it in some cellophane and it's the best gift ever. Okay. Number seven is for those that want to splurge a bit on your gifts. 
Um, up till now, I give, I've given you really economical gift choices. There's a wide range of prices, you know, that are available for each and every item. But this one is very unique. And that is a subscription box. Yes, I've said it a couple times when talking about other gifts. A subscription box is, is an amazing gift for a book nerd. You can pay for one month or three or a year. You can buy as much or as little as you want, you know, minimum one month. And there's some really cool ones out there. Some that, you know, include some of the things that I mentioned, like, you know, bookmarks and mugs and t-shirts and, you know, books and, uh, you know, candles, you know, book scented, you know, book themed scented candles and soaps and there's so much if you want to check out some reliably good boxes then I definitely re recommend the next three boxes I have tried them I have purchased them and I have enjoyed them uh, one is owl crate one is the bookish box and the third one is once upon a book club so once upon a book club has two options adult or ya so you get a book in the box along with other things that relate to the book so it's really cool how you know as you read the book when you get to certain pages there's a gift in the box that is wrapped with a page number on it. So as you turn to page 50, for example, you open the gift that says page 50. It's very cool. And it, the gift coincides with what you're reading in the book. So I really think that Once Upon a Book Club is a very unique, if nothing else, is definitely a really good option. The Bookish Box is also another good one. You can accumulate tons of shirts like I did. And there's a lot of variation as well. You can get a box without a shirt that just has a bunch of different goodies or you can get a box with a shirt and then you can even upgrade one more time and get a box with a shirt and a book so and I think you have an adult or YA option there as well so there's lots of choices and I believe you also have a choice with Owl Crate. I'm not sure what the choice is it's been a while since I had Owl Crate but I know that Owl Crate works a lot with Etsy sellers. So you get a lot of handmade goods. And I think the bookish box does as well. Uh, as well as Once Upon a Book Club. I think they all work with Etsy sellers. So it's really cute, unique, fun things in there. And really, you can use almost everything in those boxes. Uh, there's not a lot of waste. They send good stuff. So definitely check those three out. If you want to um, give them a try, I do have some links in the show notes that are affiliate links. If you choose to use them, I will get a small credit. I hope you do. That will really help me out in my book subscription box addiction, but you know, it's up to you. Um, also, I do have two more recommendations. I have not seen these boxes firsthand, but I've seen them on, on Instagram and I've heard great things about them. And that is the quarterly boxes by Book Riot and the My Lit Box. Both of those I've heard great things about. So definitely check those out as well. There are links for them in the show notes. Last but not least is a gift card. Yes, a gift card. It's not that personable. I don't like to give gift cards, but if you're in a pinch or you have to mail something a long way or, you know, you don't want to mail something, but you still want to give them something to, you know, so they can purchase some books or other bookish things with, a gift card is the way to go. If you get an Amazon gift card, you can send it electronically. So if you're sending a gift card to someone around the world, send it electronically. As long as they have an Amazon account, they can get the funds and they can buy physical books, ebooks, audiobooks, or something else altogether. Or, you know, if you know someone and you're giving them a, a, a gift card that's local, you can get Barnes and Noble, you know, so they can peruse the shelves and pick what they like. Or if you know if they like um, gently used or pre-loved books, definitely think about giving them a gift card to a local resale shop like Second and Charles. Or maybe find a really fun, unique, independent bookstore with a really awesome barista that works there and knows how to make the perfect latte. Whatever it is, you know, gift cards are always that last minute go to that are win win. You know what I'm saying? You can't really, while it's not as fun as opening, you know, a pretty, you know, mug with things in it or, you know, a subscription box or, you know, anything that's wrapped a t shirt or, you know, a game or, 
anything while it's not as fun as that a gift card is reliable and no one will shun a gift card so i could go on and on about gifts for real i could probably list another eight if i sat here and thought about it long enough but i think i've given you enough to start thinking about what kind of gifts the book lovers in your life would like it gets the wheels turning i'm sure you will find the perfect gift this season for every single book nerd in your life if you end up getting one of these items and gifting it to someone get back at me on twitter and let me know how much they enjoyed it because i know that any book lover would enjoy these gifts or if you have a suggestion that maybe i missed and you think i should know about it tweet that at me as well because i always love to check out new gift possibilities it might end up on my list next year you know i might just buy it for myself so definitely tweet at me I want to thank you for being here today. Thank you for streaming and downloading and sharing this episode. I want to thank you in advance for that. Thank you for spending the time here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast with me. I appreciate you very much. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving and I will catch you in the next episode. And until then, happy reading. Bye everyone. If you enjoyed today's book chat episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcast and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy all things bookish, including author interviews. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading.